In the beginning of August, one of the Valve's official Twitter pages announced a collaboration with Komodo. For those who don't know, they are a Japanese game publisher who is going to help Valve bring Steam Deck to four Asian markets in Japan, Korea, Taiwan and Hong Kong. Every time Valve enters a new region, releases a new game or other product, the company goes into full interactivity mode with the press and the community. As a result of this communication, usually big heads from Valve make some important statements or even announcements, and today's case is not an exception. During the communication with the press, Greg Kummer, a product designer who works at Valve since the development of the first Half-Life, said in an interview with Famitsu that they are not going to stop game development. Right now the company has a whole bunch of games in progress. This field is very important for Valve and most of the employees are working on the games and not other products of the company. They still have a lot of plans for the Half-Life and Portal universes and there is no way they are going to abandon them. Honestly, you should take all Valve's statements with a grain of salt, but at the moment we know about at least a few games in active development. It's Citadel, HLX and Port of CSGO to Source 2. And if the big heads at Valve are so positive about it publicly, maybe it's not that bad. On September 1st, a major update with Battle Pass was released in Dota 2. Those who've been following my stuff for a long time probably already know that when one game on Source 2 gets a big update, it usually consists of leaks related to the other projects as well. This happens because Valve utilizes one global iteration of the new engine. And in the process of final compilation, strings from other games are being pulled into the code. Once again, I was able to find a whole bunch of stuff related to the future CSGO port, new graphics, lock compensation system, ray tracing, controlled vehicles with physical behavior and of course future Valve games in the Half-Life universe. So let's get right into it. In first, there is new CSGO references in protobuffs. Roughly speaking, it is a sort of thing that tells the game server what data packets should be expected from the client. In this exact case, we are talking about the calculations of the tick rate on which the player is moving, the position of his head and his body. And it also captures the exact moment when the player presses left or right mouse button. Speaking of the head, there is also a mention of the player's head hitbox and lock compensation system. It's already exists in CSGO on the first source engine and it's necessary for the players with low and high pings in order to play comfortably together on the same server. So even if one of the players is lagging, shots and hits will still count correctly. It's worth noting that the mention of CSGO already appeared in protobuffs before. Previously developers added a function which tracks the position of the players' eyes on the pitch yav row values. And it also captures the exact tick in which the shot is fired. Most likely all of this information is needed for the lock compensation system and of course anti-cheat. Secondly, there was a mention of a new tool for compiling CSGO assets. At the moment all data about items, weapons, skins and stickers are stored in a single file called items game. In general, this method is quite confusing and inconvenient, and probably devs already tired of keeping this mess going. We can assume that from now on all of the items, weapons, agents and even skins will be stored as a separate assets. Probably each asset will have its own text file with .vdata format, which can be easily edited through the source to tools. Funny enough, but we already implemented a similar system into our project with intention of porting CSGO to Sandbox, the spiritual successor of Garry's mod which is running on Source 2. And because of this, I can easily demonstrate how it's going to work. Let's say we have some assets with a .cs item format. For example, we'll take the M4A4 weapon. If we'll open it through the text editor, we'll see just a bunch of different, not really intuitive strings. But if we'll open the same asset in Source 2, we'll get a full-fledged interface, where even the most unskilled user can change the parameters, change the appearance or rename localization strings. 
Currently, there are more than a thousand skins in CSGO, and skin market brings Valve more money than other games such as Dota 2 altogether. For a complete migration to Source 2, the developers need to create a system that would import all existing skins without any changes. Cause otherwise, it could severely affect the price of items and in-game economy. Official drop percentages of rare items are in just some mentions of a view model effect system and a first person legs. At the moment, there are not any games with the first-person view on Source 2, so it's definitely made for CSGO or some other Half-Life type of shooter. Usually, view model effects means all sorts of muzzle flashes and fire particles from the gun. And the first-person legs don't even need to be commented on, but I think it might look a bit awkward in CSGO. Fourthly, a reference to the GoTV system, which is intended for watching replays and recording demos. Systems that are currently used in Dota or Half-Life Alex have a quite different naming, so GoTV is an exclusive part from CSGO. To fully port the game to the new engine, the developers will have to build a backward compatibility of recorded demos, because demos and all sorts of the data they are gathering are used to train the neural network for the core of VACnet anti-cheat. So, GoTV is one of the most necessary systems for the development and community. Fifthly, a new console command Fog Override that previously existed only in CSGO and left for that too. It turns on and off custom settings for the smoke on the map. Also, some new materials for the skyboxes and shaders for the sun, and the system for phasing objects on the map depending on the range, which exists in all Valve's games on the Source engine, and is necessary for the optimization of CSGO on low-end systems. Sixthly, map compilation and like baking using the power of your graphics card. For those who don't know, right now Source 2 is only utilizing CPU power, and because of that, large and complex locations can take up to few days for final compilation. Relation. Baking with the GPU will be tightly coupled with the RTX ray tracing technology, which will greatly speed up the process for map makers. Judging by the strings, in addition to baked maps, ray tracing in real time will appear in one of the future Valve games. In other words, it's like real shadows and reflections from objects, just like in Cyberpunk or any other modern game. Another important technology that Valve is starting to integrate into Source 2 is the support for mesh LEDs. In short, Mesh shading is an analog of Nanite from Unreal Engine 5 made by NVIDIA. This technology helps to process thousands of high polygonal objects in a fraction of a second. It will allow Valve to increase the graphics quality in their games to a new photorealistic level without sacrificing almost any performance. You can read more about it on the official NVIDIA blog, and if you wanna try out MeshLeds yourself, you can sign up on the website for developers and download the demo called Asteroids. Seventhly, things that are definitely confirmed the development of some game in Half-Life universe. Personally, previous leaks were good enough for me, but now it's just impossible to deny. HEV suit plug the attach, NPC Houndai item attach, and grenade launcher fire sticky. So the player will be able to plug and unplug the HEV suit somewhere. Most likely we're talking about the medical stations. Similar VR mechanics has been already done for the game Vertigo, the author of which helped Valve in the process of developing Half-Life Alex. Also, the player will have an opportunity to attach some items to NPC creatures. In this exact case, it's like the many-eyed dogs from the first Half-Life. And also, there is a grenade launcher with sticky bombs, similar to one that Demo Man from Team Fortress 2 has. It could be either related to the Citadel game or a project codenamed HLX. Eighthly, a super advanced system for the physics-based cars. If I start going through each line one by one, this video will take another 20 minutes. But in a nutshell, they are doing the most realistic behavior for the vehicles. There is transmissions, the suspension, the detailed physics of the wheels, the engine and the joints, the fuel system, air resistance and pistons. If someone would let me look at these lines without any context, I would think that Valve was making some sort of full-fledged racing simulator. Vehicles can be flipped, other players with certain subclasses can sit on them as a passengers, you can mount weapons on them, different parts of them can be replaced or even upgraded, and much, much more. 
If you want to research more about it yourself, I organized it into a full paste with easy sorting on each topic. If you've been following my Twitter page for a while, you are most likely aware that I covered many of these topics already before. And if you want to research Dota 2 update that came out on September 1st, you also need to take into account the June 9th update. Because there also were many strings connected with the CSGO, ray tracing, vehicles, movement interpolation and much, much more. I've left links to both of these pastes in the description. At the same time, the developers of CSGO made some really weird tweaks to the VACnet anti-cheat. Starting from the middle of July, more than 150k accounts were banned. It's one of the biggest VAC waves in recent times, and the majority of cheaters got an Overwatch game ban because of VAC net. It's kinda possible that the developers entered this cleanup process before some next big thing. So it's up to you to speculate on what it might be. Make sure to check out my previous video where I talk about the first dev play tests of CSGO on Source 2. And don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking and writing some comments. Until next time. Увидимся!